Hello, welcome to Flourish ICT Academy. In this series, I'll be teaching you how to troubleshoot your computers. Whether you are using a laptop or desktop, it is very important for you to understand what may be responsible for some certain misbehavior of your computer. Now, think about it in this way. When a car owner has a basic understanding of some of the car components, especially the essential one, such a person will not be stranded for too long. As a matter of fact, he might even be able to fix one or two things in the car that will not make him to be stranded before you go ahead and then see, uh, you know, the mechanic or whoever is going to work on it. Even today as well, people know, you know, symptoms of certain disease. So as, you know, a doctor of IT, in this series of video, I want to show you, I want to teach you some of the symptoms of computer problem and how to troubleshoot them. Now, to begin with, understand that computer headaches could be software or hardware. Uh, both of them could malfunction. You can have a software problem and then it can be a hardware problem. Remember that software is generally divided into two. In one of the training, I think computer training for beginners, uh, lesson one, I explained that in detail. And I said that we have a system software as well as application software. System software refer to your operating system, such as Windows OS, Apple High OS, depending on the type of system that you are using, whether you are using a window or you are using an Apple computer and the likes. Now, the OS can be corrupted and it can make your system to misbehave. Uh, a lot of people, sometimes they think that when they have uh, like blue screen of uh, dead and some other errors like that, they might think it's the hard drive. Sometimes people think that uh, the problem of OS is hard drive. Sometimes they think that the problem of hard drive is OS. I'll be explaining that to you so you are able to know what exactly is wrong with your computer, whether it's the OS or, you know, the hardware, whether it's a software problem, or the hardware problem. So we'll be discussing all of that in details in the subsequent video as well as this. However, in this video today, I want to lay a solid foundation before we dive in and discuss in detail. Now, remember I said that the system's problem or system headache could either be uh, software related or it can also be an hardware related. But the most common computer headache I've seen usually is actually from hardware. This is why I did a video sometimes ago and I listed 10 things, bad habits damaging your computer. Look at the description section of this video. You are going to see the link to that video. Some bad habits that are actually damaging your computer that you might not even be aware of, but you are doing them regularly. Most of the system problems today, they are hardware related, not to say that we cannot be a software. Remember, I said most of the problem, they are hardware uh, related. Now, the hardware, when I talk about the hardware, what I mean is the physical components of your computer. I mean, the component that you we can touch. So they can develop problem. Let's talk about some of the hardware components that usually develop problem in a computer and look at how to troubleshoot them uh, in the coming series. The first one we are going to be looking at or talk about today is AC adapter. The AC adapter, which is also called a power adapter or laptop charger, it, you know, is used to provide sufficient power to operate the laptop for extended period of time. You use it to charge your laptop and then to recharge the laptop when, uh, you know, the, the battery is down. If you are using a laptop, that adapter could develop a problem. And when it's developed a problem, in most cases, people don't even know that the source of the computer headache is actually the adapter. And also, there's something you need to know when you're replacing your laptop adapter as well. You need to pay attention both to the amperage and then the voltage. Those two things, they are very important. You just you just don't go to market and say, oh, what type of laptop are you using? And you say, I'm using a Dell, I'm using an HP laptop. And you mention the model and they just give you an adapter. You must pay attention to the voltage and then the amperage of that particular adapter because it can damage your system. When there is an excessive, you know, 
power source going to your motherboard and when you have a lower rating as well compared to what you are using it's going to take you a longer time before your laptop will charge i will explain more in detail about that now let's talk about the second component uh, that has to do with your system that can develop problem and then can bring a system edit that is the hard drive now a computer hard drive is a physical data storage device that stores digital information all the information on your system they are stored on the hard drive so it's a storage de device hard drive are used to store both the operating system okay and your file the photo the music everything that you have on your system they are stored on the hard drive when the hard drive is crashed then the entire component the entire content on that system which include the os and the file could be lost to that incident so hard drive is a very fighter that's the main storage device on your computer and if you go ahead and click on your start button or you go to the file explorer and you open up your system you're going to see something called this pc okay this pc that we are talking about is actually the hard drive all the components everything all the file the os and everything you have is inside that particular uh, hard drive which we actually refer to as this pc in the windows uh, operating system now what are the problems that you can have with hard drive and how do you troubleshoot it we're going to talk about that let's go further and mention another component now which is random access memory ram that is another component on your pc that is very important to know what it does and then what problem ram provide a temporary story for the operating system the software program and any other data that are in current use every time that you open your browser you open microsoft word you open any application whatsoever on your system you open those applications on the ram it was a ram that store the opening of that document temporarily until you save them or you close them that is when they are going to move out of the ram to the permanent storage which is your hard drive so the size of your ram the ram can be corrupted okay it can make it difficult for system to open or i mean application to open up application to boot apart from the fact that it can slow down your system the ram is not working effectively it can also affect the booting okay your system will not boot properly if you don't have a ram so how do you now know whether the problem you're having is ram or something else i'm going to give you detail about that another component that is important we are going to look at is the motherboard when you talk about the motherboard, it's the main circuit board in a computer system. It connects all the internal components, all the memory, the processor, graphic card, and all other hardware they reside on the motherboard. This component is actually inside your computer casing. So the motherboard is actually what house all of them the RAM, the processor, all of them, they are on the motherboard. And you have a lot of circuits and the uh, capacitors on the motherboard as well. It also provides power to each component and allows them to communicate with each other. So when you plug your system, the motherboard is power. And that motherboard now sends power to all other components that are connected to it. Now let's talk about the CPU cooling fan. That is another very important uh, component in your system that can have a problem the cpu cooling fan what is the job of the cooling fan the fan works by blowing out it okay from the component that you have on your motherboard the component the processor the heat that the processor is generating remember the cpu central processing unit is the brain of your computer that is the one that is doing the processing so it usually gets out because it's processing a lot of things that you are doing on your system and all other components as well so the cooling fan is what blow out the heat if you check your fan your your system you are using a laptop you are going to see the vent under the pc and then you can see those vents if the fan is not working your system will be shutting down consistently because when it gets to certain temperature the system will automatically shut down in order not to damage the component in your system so that is why it is very important to also know that the cooling fan is an important component in your system now another thing is the screen you can have a problem with your laptop screen remember it's not only when your maybe somebody step on your screen or accidentally the laptop drop and then the screen is cracked you can see physically that that's the problem with the screen 
at another time, I've seen several times where people just discover that they built up their system and the display is totally dark. Sometimes they think the problem is the screen. It might not be the screen. It could be the lamp that is behind the screen. Okay, so you need to also know how to troubleshoot whether the problem you are having is actually a screen problem or the flex. So sometimes the problem could be the flex and at another time it will actually be the screen. How do you know whether the issue you are having is actually the screen or the flex, which is the, you know, the flex cable that connect from the screen to the motherboard or the lamp that is behind the screen. Uh, what I normally tell people is to, if they have an external screen, like a monitor, then you connect your system to a monitor to an external screen and watch whether there is a display. It that may not be a display on your primary screen, which is maybe your laptop, but if you connect it to an external screen, Okay, you connect it to a monitor or to a projector or to your TV, and then you can see the display over that screen. You know that, oh, the problem is actually the screen. The problem is not the flex. The problem is not the lamp. The problem is the screen. That's one way to troubleshoot your screen. If you notice that the screen, there is no crack on the screen, and yet the screen cannot display again. But if there is no display, both on the primary screen and the secondary screen, the extended screen that you have just plugged, to your laptop, you know, then you will know that there is a problem with the lamp. Your screen is good. That's one way to troubleshoot the screen. I'm saying all of this so that people is not going to take, people will not take advantage of your ignorance. You know, it's good to have a basic understanding of some of these companies and know what exactly uh, the problem is uh, in order to be able to fix them. And you already know, if you are playing in music and nothing is coming forth from your system, that can be a speaker problem, okay? And if you are on online, you are having a meeting, you are speaking of, you can have an issue with your microphone as well, and then people are not able to hear you. That's a way you can actually troubleshoot all of this further without, before you even making an attempt to call an engineer or a technician to check your uh, computer for you. All of these and many more, I am going to uh, discuss them in detail in the next video how to effectively troubleshoot your system in the upcoming video we will do that in detail however if you have not subscribed to this channel i want to encourage you to go ahead and do that right away so you can be notified the next time i upload the troubleshooting uh, steps for all of the component that we have just mentioned right now and the steps you can actually take without even opening up your computer when you are having a computer headache also i'd like you to support my work on this channel by joining the youtube community there's a link in the description section of this video that you can actually use to join the my youtube community let's form a big it community around the globe by joining that youtube community you are supporting what i'm doing on this channel and that is going to encourage me actually to make much free videos for you and other people don't forget to like this video so that other people can get notified about the video and youtube can recommend it as well if you want to also join our pro class description section of this video there is a link there and you see all the it courses that we offer and how you can actually learn and having a one-on-one -on -one, uh, class with me where you are going to uh, up speed and then you are able to be scaled up in your it thank you and see you in the next class bye